knows that his team is well prepared. He said he's had a great practice week. They know what they're up against today, a very fine Michigan team, but he thinks they've got a pretty good shot. Minnesota has won the toss, and they have elected to defer to the second half, and so Michigan's going to get the football to start the, the game. Chilled below freezing for a taste that's smooth to the extreme. Hewlett Packard printers, printers that work almost as hard as you do, and Chili's Bar and Grill, where steak lovers go for great grilled steaks. Michigan recovers the ball, and it looks like Derek Harvey got down there in a hurry. Well, I don't believe that. They call that the sunshine kick. They try to pop it up and try to get their down players, the outside players, down there as fast as the receiving team, and they did. This is to perfection. Watch the sunshine kick. Put it up high. Put it up with the sunshine. Now get guys down. Now look at the left hand of your screen. The dark jerseys are there before the white jerseys. That's perfect. That's the way it's got to be. That's the way they have it. Special teams gets one. Freshman linebacker David Bowens out of Pontiac, Michigan, injured on the play, but it looked like he came up with that ball after it bounced off a couple of other players. I think initially Ernest Sanders, number 31, might have hit Tangan in the back of the helmet with either his leg or... Side. Bianca Batuka ripping off another big run for the Wolverines inside the 20 before Craig Sauer can bring him down. Once again, an update. Thank you, John. Boy, those Bulldogs full of problems and injuries in Florida, of course, ready to pound them. Bianca Batuka again, picking his way inside the five. Touchdown! Well, Bianca Batuka, he doesn't want to be known as a finesse guy, wants to be known as a tough runner, and boy, he was that time carrying tackles into the end zone. He got behind big Zach Adamley and John Runyon and went 16 yards for his second score. Michigan has now outscored its opponents 111-22 to in the first half this year. Look at Bianca Batuka, 6'1", 200 pounds, 111 yards last week. Boy, he's out to a quick start already this week. He's got about 70 yards. He ran right through early to get into the end zone. Remy Hamilton, another extra point, is good. Hamilton has missed only one this year. I said he had 70 yards. He's already over 100 yards. He's now rushed for over 100 yards for the 10th time in his career. Sauter now will go from the shotgun on first down inside handoff to Cooper, and he will go nowhere. Big William Carr waiting for him. And a loss of two on the play. Second down, 12. Sauter will go down at the 35. Glenn Steele coming from his defensive end position to get the sack. Now it's third and 19. Sauter trying to roll away from the pressure this time. Gets it away. Incomplete intended for Ryan Thelwell, who could not hold on at the 46 in Minnesota. Charles Woodson had the coverage. It's all right. That was a well-designed play. They did take Corey Sauter away from the pressure. Now Chris Howard is in a tailback for the Wolverines, and he has the ball. Short gain of about two or three, short of the 25. Play action on second down. Greasy has lots of time, and he's going much longer than 15 yards. Amani Toomer, touchdown Michigan. A 75-yard bomb. We said the Michigan receivers had to have some big plays, 15 yards or more. You're right, this one is much more. I'll tell you what, quarterback controversy, how about Greasy? They say his arm isn't that strong, wrong. This ball is not only thrown deep, but it's thrown well. He never breaks stride. Toomer took it in stride and took it the distance. Boy, that ball was perfectly thrown. Remy Hamilton's been busy. He'll try yet another extra point. It is 21 to nothing Michigan with 4.47 left to go in the first quarter. Centers are taught to snap the ball and Sauter could have just taken a knee, but Michigan did not jump off sides. So it's just a down and now it's third and 30. Sauter has time, long way to go and it's intercepted by Woodson. Selwell makes the tackle on Woodson and flags all over the place on the tackle.
Now, without the penalty, this would be a pretty good pat play. It's an interception, but it's as good as a punt. All right, now watch and see on the tackle if Thelwell gets up on his face mask. There it is. That's two in the last four plays, and again, we talked about penalties and turnovers killing Minnesota. Well, this one only a five-yard infraction, but it does move the ball to the Minnesota 49, where Michigan again gets a short field to work with. 10.51 to go in the second quarter. Chris Howard in at running back. And he has the football, but nowhere to go. In fact, Minnesota tackling the football. It's the loose. ball is out. Minnesota thinks they've got it, and the officials say they do. Minnesota gets the ball right back. So Minnesota at their 49. First down, and this one misconnecting. Johnny Woodson went in, the pass went out, and Clarence Thompson diving for the interception couldn't come up with it it'll be second and ten whoops nobody to hand off to as Cooper went one way Sauter went the other and Rashid Simmons brings Sauter down for a loss third and long third and long play action Sauter under pressure the ball is loose was his arm going forward yes no, they're going to say that it's down. The officials marking him down right there. Joaquin Fizell was the first guy in there. And Minnesota going backwards again. The Michigan defense gets a huge hand. Javon Jackson looked to go the wrong way. Again, a mix-up in the backfield, and William Carr was waiting for him. As Sauter, I think, expected him to be on the other side. I don't know whether it was Sauter or Jackson who made the mistake, but there's no communication back there. Yeah, Maybe Jackson didn't get the call or something. I don't know. No back offense now. Sauter to throw, and this one's complete. Short of a first down at about the 38 of Michigan. Jackson in motion. Sauter with a short drop. Over the middle, complete for the first down. They're trying to get into the end zone. They still trail 21 to nothing, however. They have less than three minutes remaining in the half. Sauter from the shotgun. And he's just going to throw this one into the band. Still at the 13 of Michigan. Looking in the end zone, Thelwell, touchdown. No, he couldn't hold on. He had it and dropped it. And Sauter can't believe it. Right in his hands. This formation's been good for him. See how they spread all the way across the field? They spread the defense thin, thin it out. They're coming with a blitz. Sauter gets it away. It's up for grabs. Incomplete. Winners almost came up with it. Rob Sweat was right in Sauter's face, and it'll be fourth and 10, and the field goal unit is coming on for Minnesota. 2.41 to go in the half. Mike Chalberg is seven of eight kicking field goals. This will be a 30-yard attempt, and it'll be in to the win. And it is good. Mike Chalberg will kick it off into the wind and it hangs up big time very short kick now it takes a roll that ball's alive anybody can get it and at the 34 minnesota thinks they have it they got it first down minnesota raphael cooper was down there on special teams i don't know if he's the one who got it or not there's cooper going in motion solder with good protection fell well Inside the five to about the two in the grasp of Rob Sweat. First and goal from about the two and a half. Cooper. Did he get there? Yes, touchdown. Right on the goal line in the grasp of Jarrett Irons. It's a touchdown, Minnesota, but a penalty flag is down. A penalty marker thrown in the end zone as Cooper just did break the plane. That's not the only thing thrown in the end zone. They're throwing marshmallows in that corner. And the fans better be careful or they'll get a flag for unsportsmanlike conduct on the crowd. Look at all the mushroom, the uh, marshmallows there. Maybe they're throwing mushrooms too. Who knows? Oh, one. Oh. Defense, 12 men on the field. The touchdown is good. 
So Michigan had 12 guys on the field. Cooper still scores. The extra point is good, and the complexion of the game has changed dramatically with the turnovers and Minnesota's ability to capitalize. 47 seconds left, and Michigan leading 21 to nothing in the first quarter now leads by only 11 near the end of the half. Bianca Batuka. Bianca Batuka breaks a tackle by Rodney Heath and takes it 52 yards. He broke two tackles at the line of scrimmage, then they couldn't catch him. Boy, they were out of the blocks in a hurry. Watch this. Here comes Bianca Batuka again. Minnesota catching blocks, not getting off blocks. He beats him to the corner, carries two guys in with him. It was 14-0 in a heartbeat. Then watch this. Here's Heath again, number seven, trying to stay up with Toomer. Number 18, Toomer, 6'4", and just runs by Heath. And what, it was 21 nothing. What a throw by Greasy to hit Toomer in mid-stride. Hey, After a field goal, Cooper came back to score Minnesota's only touchdown. That's right, Steve. Excuse me, I was going to say, give them a lot of credit. Minnesota never came out of its game plan, continued to run Cooper. That opened up. They spread the formations a little bit, created some air in the Michigan defense. Very successful. 21 to 10. Michigan did not have a first down in the second quarter. Pretty much intact in the first half, but he'll get that 80 yards. Sauter in there. Quarterback gives to Raphael Cooper at tailback, and Cooper gets a yard, maybe two, that is all, into the middle of the Michigan defense. Trent Zankowitz, one of the senior leaders out of Cleveland, Ohio, on the stop. Now Cooper doing a good job in the lineup, but he hopes to get back in the lineup next week against Ohio State. Thanks, John. That pass intended for Tony Levine, who wasn't looking. Well, it is now third and nine for Minnesota, and they spread him out again. Sauter going from the shotgun. The out route to Feltwell incomplete. Sliding for the catch, he would have had enough for the first down. Charles Woodson had the coverage on Ryan Thelwell, but it's fourth and nine. And Minnesota will have to give it up on their opening possession. Michigan getting their first opportunity, leading 21 to 10 here in the second half. Greasy to Bianca Batuka. Breaks through a hole. Creates one, actually. Finally tripped up after a gain of about four. Rodney Heath and Ben Langford tripped him up. Play action. Greasy wants to go long. Toomer out there again. He's got a touchdown. <laughs> Michigan scoring drives today have been 39 seconds, 44 seconds, 34 seconds. That was the 75 yarder to Toomer. And a minute 58 was their longest drive. That may come back to haunt them. They score so quickly, they don't give the defense time to rest. Look at this, though. Toomer just running by the defensive backs. This time, number two, Craig Scruggs, a freshman. He's only 5'9", Toomer 6'4". We thought that size differential was going to be a factor. Speed differential has made the difference. And speed kills. Boy, speed's been killing Minnesota. Sauter now will have to run. Blasted out of bounds. Marcus Ray came up first, and then Rob Sweat finished him off. Javon Jackson at tailback, second down about five, and Jackson has the football. Nowhere to go. Bluthen but blue shirts over there. Clarence Thompson up from the secondary, and defensive end Glenn Steele, number 81, sliding out as well. Raphael Cooper goes in motion. Good protection. Now it breaks down as Sauter is sacked inside the 15 by Big William Carr. Second and ten. Bianca Batuka straight up the middle. To about the 40 before he's pushed back. It'll be a gain of about five. Good job keeping him out of there all day. He's an all-conference type guy. Plays that strong side. Third and five. Greasy under pressure. Gets it away. Complete to Mercury Hayes. And Hayes tripped up, sliding out of bounds at about the 15. Don Williams may have saved a touchdown. Gracie from the pocket, complete inside the 10. It's going to be short of the first down, however, as Tooman made the reception and sour the tackle. It'll be fourth and about three. Gracie again had pressures coming from the inside. So a field goal attempt. Remy Hamilton with Reamsrma holding. They'll mark it at about the 16. It'll be a 26-yard attempt. 
just inside the upright. It is good. And Remy Hamilton has now moved into second place on the all-time Michigan kicking list. That's his 39th career field goal. Michigan now up 31 to 10 in the third. And he hadn't played that much football. Greasy firing it over the middle complete to the tight end, Reemsema. Tackled by Ben Langford. Reemersman now on the left side. On third down. And Greasy's going long. Tumor with a diving catch. Amani Tumor has been all alone all day. Craig Scruggs had the coverage, but he was five or more yards away. Michigan now at the Minnesota 11. Bianca Batuka down to about the six for a gain of five. Hammered by Konzemius. And all pretty much successful. And he's been bothered by a bruised shoulder, but he played through that last week, and he's playing through it here today. Gets it away. Touchdown, Michigan, Chris Howard. Greasy was under tremendous pressure, took another hit. Konzemius was blitzing, and Chris Howard out of the backfield for another Michigan touchdown. He talked about the blitz. I don't even think Greasy saw this touchdown. Watch this. Release it, read it. He goes down. There it is. Touchdown, Michigan. Where's Brian Greasy on his back? Never did see the touchdown. And now Greasy has used seven receivers today. Same as he did last week. Spreads it around. He's been accurate. He's read the defenses. He's read the blitzes. He's got things off quickly. Watch it from this angle now. Here comes the blitz. He sees it. Knows he's got to go quick. Does. Boom. Now he goes down and never does see the catch or the touchdown. But the ball was perfectly thrown. Great concentration. Even better execution. Here's the release. There's the touchdown. Michigan using all their weapons. The final 15 from Ann Arbor. Not too many folks have left on this homecoming Saturday, a late Saturday afternoon at the height of autumn. Steve Zabriskie, Tim Brandt, and John Spagnola, glad you're with us. As we begin the fourth quarter, Michigan on third and one, very close to the first downs. You know, rushing yards per game, Today, Michigan's allowed only 51 yards. So Minnesota's had 51 yards rushing. Bianca Batuka's had 135 by himself. That's right. He's got it again. Sinking through again. First down and then some. Bianca Batuka's still going. Finally, hogtied by Don Williams, the safety. But Bianca Batuka takes it down near the Minnesota 20. Look at the smile on his face. Guys are going to dog him about getting caught from behind, but he had a pursuit angle. But watch this. Number one, he explodes to the line. Then watch him break some tackles. Then he gets to the sideline. He'll break another tackle right here. And how he stays in bounds with his great balance. Look at this. And then the uh, pursuit angle finally tracks him down. He wanted the face mask. No flag was called. Watch him come high on the head and try to behead him. Williams grabs high and takes his face mask. Fortunately, Bianca Batuka just goes with it, lets his body follow his head. Otherwise, it could have been an injury there. Bulldog down after a 60-yard gain. Ed Davis in a tailback, banging straight ahead, and Davis down to the 11. Michigan with a tight formation that time. First and goal, Michigan. Ed Davis still in there at tailback. Running hard down to the 6 or 7 in the grasp of Crawford Jordan, the strong safety. Second and goal. Greasy with time. Touchdown! Reimersma! There's some celebration among the 105,000. Almost that many here. Boy, if they really picked on Rodney Heath today. Here's Reimersma again. He's the big tight end. Six foot six. Boom. Here comes Heath, the young junior at 5'10". Jason Carr, son of head coach Lloyd Carr, is now in, relieving Bob Greasy, who had an outstanding day. And Ed Davis runs hard across the 20. That's second and four. We have 10-20 to go in the game. Michigan with a 35-point lead and the ball. And Jason Carr in a quarterback. 
His first pass complete over the middle of Tooman, the tight end. And Jeremy Tooman has a first down near the 31. Craig Sauer. Jason Carr is a senior. Went to high school right here in Ann Arbor because his dad has been a coach in Michigan for 15 years. And when he's been called upon, he's done a pretty good job, Tim. He really has. And, you know, talking with Lloyd Carr yesterday in the coach's office, he was talking about what a thrill it is to be the head coach here at Michigan, but what a thrill it is and how often you have the opportunity to coach your own son. That's right. Good protection. Complete again. Short of the first down, but a good first down gain nonetheless. Ty Streets making the catch, and Rodney Heath the tackle. Drew wide open, very, very fast attack. That's true. Ed Davis again, pounding for the first down, out to about the 43 or 44. And they're taking a lot of time on every snap. Davis again, big hole. Ed Davis into Minnesota territory as the gopher 47 before he's dragged down by Craig Scruggs in the secondary. Tim Biakabatuka, one yard short of 200 on the day, 10 and a half yards of carry. Only six yards short of his all-time career high. You know, hey, we need Spags. Spags, go tell Lloyd Card, put him back in for one six-yard carry. You want me to go over there, Tim, and ask him, yeah. really? Yeah, go ahead. I, I will. You know what? I'll take a nip out of that little brown jug while I'm going over, too. <laughs> you better, because it'll be the last time you do a game here. <laughs> it's getting cold down here. On yeah. third down, Jason Carr hits Ty Streets for the first down. Rodney Heath makes the stop. Chris Floyd with a huge hole. And a first down inside the 30. Craig Scruggs, who's been real busy in that secondary since coming into the game, had to make the tackle again. You've got Carr. Carr was a 13 quarterback. He wants to come in. He wants to play. Let him work the offense a well, little bit. Plus, the passes they're throwing are possession-type routes. There's a curl complete to Ty Streets, who has been Carr's favorite receiver, and Rodney Heath makes the stop again. So, you know, he you know, waited in line here to play quarterback behind Todd Collins. He got his shot this year, but his father told him back in spring practice, listen, if it's close, you're going to lose. You're a senior. I've got an outstanding freshman in Scott Dreisbach. I've got uh, Brian Greasy, a sophomore. And if it's a close competition, which it turned out to be, you're going to lose out. A tough thing for a father to tell a son, but it's great to see Jason in here and doing well. You got that right, Spanks. Thanks. Cars completed four of six passes for 38 yards. And this is the 13th play of this drive. Touchdown, Clarence Williams. Yet another tailback. And Clarence Williams, who came in early in the game, has looked good every time he's been in there. He is just a freshman, also from Detroit. And it's 51 to 10, Michigan. Bianca Batuka's played, Howard's played, Davis has played. Now here comes Clarence William, the freshman, 5'9", 170 pounds, and watch him work. Twisting, turning, spinning like a whirling dervish into the end zone. 52 to 10, the Wolverines. It's good experience here today. Not the exact way that they wanted to. I mean, they have been spanked. But they'll feel better if they get a touchdown here at the end of the game. And the Michigan fans don't want it to happen. But it does. Minnesota with a touchdown. Nelson right in front of Tyrone Noble with one minute and 19 seconds remaining in the game. Jim Wack. Well, they think it's important. They're carrying it off. Amani Toomer with a big game. Biakabatuka with a big game. Greasy with a big game. 